On the very morning we launched our new series, 22 Acts of Kindness, we got an email from a viewer named Kathleen Betts. And she was so thankful that we're doing this series because, as she said, you know, this is something that we all need right now. Well, we say here, here to that. But she also nominated the organization called Philip Purse for a Sister this campaign. And she sent us a link to the organization, which when you go there, you learn that this is an organization that brings comfort, hope, and dignity to women and youth in crisis with the gift of purses filled with personal necessities. Well, that certainly fit our bill as an act of kindness. So this morning, we introduce you to the founder and president, Angel Friedman. She's in Stouffville, Ontario. Angel, welcome and good morning. Good morning, Heather. Thank you so much for I'm, this opportunity. Well, I'm looking forward to spending some time with you because you obviously have many admirers far and wide. We'll introduce you to others this morning. Where did this idea come from for Philip Purse for a sister? It actually came from a lady in Texas that was filling purses and handing them out to homeless women. And uh, I thought the idea was fabulous. Uh, it worked with everything I was doing. So I just made up a Facebook page called Philip Purse for a Sister Campaign and received 1,500 purses in 2015. 1,500 purses in your very first year, 2015. And as many as that sounds, because we're looking at some of these pictures now, how many <laughs> have you filled this year in 2022, Angel? Well, you know, we are still counting and we're still sort of filling. It's still early on because our campaign ends December 1st and we have 40 campaigns going on throughout Ontario, uh, two in BC and one in PEI. But I will tell you that last year we collected over 10,000 purses. Isn't that incredible? What growth and what impact? How exactly does it work? Uh, how do you, would, does somebody just give you a purse or buy a purse or how does that, how does it actually work? So how it works, I'll just start from sort of the beginning. So uh, a woman, let's say, will just pick um, Aurelia. So somebody in Aurelia will phone me and they would like to take care of their town. So we call her a community lead. And then she'll find three businesses that will be drop-off uh, locations for um, the purses for anyone to donate to. And then weekly, she'll go to that business and she'll pick up the purses and then she'll go through through them to make sure that everything is OK in the purse. And then eventually they're distributed. Well, and we'll talk about that in a second. But what is going into the purse? I mentioned that it's it's necessities, it's provisions, correct, for mm -hmm. what's in them and who do they go to? So what, what we ask for is a shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, tampons, a toothbrush, toothpaste, but most people add a whole lot more. Like they'll add a nice note or they'll put a brush in or hair ties, a gift card from, you know, one of local coffee shops. People are very generous and very kind. We've been, we're blessed. <laughs> and those necessities, end up helping women and youth in times of crisis. Tell us where you, where you then make sure the purses end up. So the most important would be domestic violence shelters and then shelters for women and any social service that supports women. We do also, um, we do backpacks for the men's shelter and we also do backpacks for um, youth uh, in, in shelters as well, youth, both boys and girls. What does it give to the woman who received these bags? I mean, what do you hear from them directly when these purses come with, yes, necessities, but also, as you said, those beautiful personal touches too? You know, I mean, like you said in the beginning, it brings dignity to a woman. So when, you know, wherever she is or whatever is happening in her life, at least she has those necessities. I mean, to think that, you know, you have to escape a domestic violence and you, you know, usually rush out. Often women will take everything for their children and run out, you know, so when they arrive to wherever they arrive, they get a, you know, a beautiful purse filled with everything they need to start their day one. Must be pretty special for you to witness and to be involved in. Um, you've talked about your own 
personal connection to domestic violence. I don't know if you want to share part of the story, why that cause is meaningful for you, but to know that you're having that sort of uh, real impact on women in a very difficult situation, how does that make you feel? You know, I mean, I know from my mom, she had left uh, left my father, and I remember sort of the, you know, middle of the night, uh, you know, taking me out of my bed and leaving. Um, and and I know how how often we would leave with nothing. I would I do remember her leaving without her purse. So, you know, just to escape the violence. So, you know, for me, like, I, I it's everything to me that a woman would uh, have her dignity intact. I, I mean, as a social worker, I know working with women, you know how vulnerable they are, how afraid they are, and. Um, you know, Heather, this also gives me a platform to talk about domestic violence um, and, and how important it is to you know, talk about it because it unfortunately thrives in silence. You know, talk about it publicly, but also bring the community in on it, not just individuals who are making donations. Uh -huh. And we have some pictures which are really interesting that we'll touch on quickly because mm -hmm. you have a hockey team that's helped out in the campaign. Sure. Yeah, maybe a quick word on this. We have some pictures as well that we're going to show of various kids helping to contribute. So tell us about this and why it's important to get everyone involved. Well, Stouffville, Ontario is quite the hockey town, and I've been very lucky to have so many of the teams involved and, uh, you know, boys, which is great. Mm -hmm. the, the Clippers were amazing this year, uh, collecting purses and took the picture with me. They were great <laughs> sports. And then some of the school kids, some kids involved too, we'll show that. Amazing. So, you know, teachers have been really getting on board with schools and kids and and they'll what they'll do is they'll take like five classrooms and call them by a woman's name and then start collecting. So, you know, Linda's shampoo and Joyce's tampons or what have you. And um, the kids get involved. I mean, to me, it's all about leaving a legacy and to be sure that, you know, the next generation takes care of um Everyone, really. 40 campaigns in Ontario and in other provinces as well now. What's the dream as you continue to grow Philippers for a sister? The dream is every province, every small town and city in Canada to have community leads, um, you know, as north or every, everywhere. Like we have community, we have a community lead in Kirkland Lake. And uh, she's been with me for five years now. And she collects purses there. She has great drop-offs and she donates them to her local shelters. And that's the beauty of this, that if you have a, if you have a campaign going on in Wasega Beach, your whole community gets involved and the purses stay in Wasega Beach. So same with Toronto, here in Stovall, wherever. It's really giving back to your own community. So community helping community in many ways. Well, at this time of year, and given the work that you're involved in, I don't know, but your name could not be more appropriate. So Angel, <laughs> I, thank, I thank you you for the time today and for sharing uh, what you're doing and how important it is. And I'm very pleased that Kathleen nominated you so we could highlight your act of kindness and your campaign. Thank you. I'm I'm so grateful to Kathleen and also for this opportunity to spread the word. Thank you so much. Thank you. A pleasure. And best of luck with the thousands of wonderful donations you're going to make in these days to come. Angel Friedman in Stouffville, Ontario.